Hello everyone, this is Darren here with Creativity Unleashed and in this video we are going to be building some 36 foot trusses. They are made out of very readily available materials, angle iron, pipe and flat bar, which is great. Um, they can also be made to a wide range of sizes depending your application and needs. So I hope you guys have fun in the video and learn something. Thanks! So the first part for me always building a truss is to use a tape measure, chalk line, get everything marked out exactly how it is in the drawing of where everything goes and then we're off to cutting the metal. Um, we're cutting the angle iron here on the LS 1800 miter bandsaw which works really well for um, doing the precision cutting. This one can miter in both directions up to about 50 degrees um, which can work, works out for most applications really well. I believe I first ran across the Ellis Manufacturing Company at the Hobart Institute of Welding Technology where they use their belt sanders to um, prepare the weld tests for bending. And um, they produce band saws, belt sanders, and um, drill presses. So they're a pretty cool company out of Wisconsin. I normally do all of my drawings in Fusion 360. Here you can see the quality of the cuts. Right now we are laying out all of the angle iron right with the chalk line marks on the ground and where they're butted together we'll be tack welding them with E6013 here. One of the very important things is to make sure that as you add the webbing that you maintain that the trusses are very parallel to each other and at the correct distances so that things don't warp in the way that's achieved is to just simply utilize a piece of angle iron with clamps and clamp it down really well. I use a pretty hefty like three inch by quarter inch angle iron there for doing that. Here we're plasma cutting the plates that are used as the spacers and also what the pipe connects to. You can see here at both outside ends of the trusses that the plates are done just slightly different. They're a little bit bigger for the first two and then the rest of them are all the same. Um, almost square. They just have a bit of an angle on them to follow the pitch of the roof and the angle that the trusses are put at. You'll probably notice throughout the build that we're using clamps for everything. And like I had said before, it's extremely important to maintain everything parallel and even. Here we're cutting out the rest of the plate that is going to be used um, to complete the truss to attach all the webbing and maintain the correct spacing. Here you can see um, there are some of them are the vertical uprights and then we have more of the horizontal webbing that goes in and everything just gets adjusted and clamped in place based on the lines that are on the floor under it. This isn't incredibly precise but we try to make it as close as possible. On almost all of the trusses that I end up building, I go with a 412 roof pitch simply because we're in the tropics and there's no snow load and it makes the installation of the roof sheets uh, more easy. Right here you can see that all the cutting of the tubing is done with the abrasive chop saw. Um, we figure out the lengths of all the different pieces we're going to need and cut all of them out. On the small 90 degree angled parts I often find that the abrasive chop saw is faster and a lot more economical to operate and convenient especially if somebody's running the bandsaw at the same time. I also have a 14 inch carbide um, cutting saw that's the lower RPM that are a lot more expensive but I find the blades are so expensive that it doesn't make economical sense to operate that saw. Probably one of the more complex parts of this particular truss design is cutting the notches into the round tubing. This is accomplished by uh, using a milling vise that are normally used with a drill press and a modified angle grinder attachment 
that's all bolted to the precision welding table. You're able to just put the tubing in there, clamp it down, and um, crank it, and it'll make a real nice notch. I'm using a grinding wheel to take out a big enough groove that'll fit. If you're wondering why it shows a stick weld all of this instead of MIG welding, it's partly because there's a lot of breeze and the shielding gas would get blown away, but also because there, the convenience of having a 50-foot lead on here uh, makes it where I can just move across the entire truss and not have to worry about um, moving the machine or anything, so that's just really convenient. The welding machine I'm using is a little Thermal Arc 161 inverter welding machine. They're really great. They work on 110 or 220. I'm running all of the E6013 at about 110 amps. You can see that I'm just about to finish up the webbing on this truss and we will finish the truss out by um, completing the top part of the sandwich as I like to refer to it and here we have it. We just threw on the pieces of angle iron to the top and we're going to clamp it all the way along the edges and we're going to ensure that they're nice and parallel to each other and that there's um, no extra gap that they're all clamped down tight to the plate. And I ended up doing part of the welding with 7024 electrodes. They were 8th inch and I ran those about 140 amps and they just really laid really nice beads in there and they were pretty fun to use. Also another thing to make a note of is these trusses do require quite a bit of welding to complete. When designing a building's trusses you'll often find if the building is smaller that it's more economical to put more trusses that are lighter weight closer together. And as buildings get wider it often comes out cheaper to make a heavier truss and um, keep the distance between them a lot further and utilize heavier purlin material. So here I'm attaching the part that connects the truss to the wall to the um, header and you can see right here this is the plates that go into the reinforced concrete that is quarter inch by three and those bars are half inch. I prefer to just get the trusses adjusted and weld them in place. Some people prefer to have a bolted system but with bolted systems it's much easier to um, run into complexity and unforeseen measurement errors and so it just keeps it a lot simpler when you can weld it in place. Here you can see we're lifting them up and getting them ready for painting. I just utilized one of the gantry cranes that I made a while back and um, one of those rolly carts to pull the trusses out and it was surprisingly a lot easier than I thought since these trusses are pretty heavy. I always paint the trusses in a red oxide primer that tends to be the best to um, fend off the rust and ensure a very long life out of them. I tend to go with gray just simply because um, most people like that color. Um, we're utilizing one of the Harbor Freight spray guns. I find these on sale sometimes for $9 and we'll sometimes put hundreds of gallons through these sprayers and they work perfectly well for the cost. I have a few more videos on painting and finishing on the channel so if you're interested in learning more about some of the spray guns and that you can check that out. Here you can see everything's loaded up on the trucks and strapped down. We're on the way to the job site and you could definitely use a crane for setting these trusses in place but there were a lot of people and they didn't mind so we just carried them in, used some scaffolding and some ropes and it's amazing how with just a little bit of thought you can get these things up and get them welded in place. All of the purlin material is inch and a half by three tubing and it's about 18 gauge, I would say 16 or 18 gauge tubing, um, which is relatively economical. The purlins are all welded in place. Some people choose to bolt them and I've done that in the past and it can work fine. If you have people that prefer using drills, um, and putting in screws and stuff, that's great, but I prefer to just weld things. For me, it's a lot faster that way. You can see I got in all the X braces to help in the event of an earthquake. So this project's just about wrapped up. I hope you enjoyed the build process. If you want to see some of the other designs that I've done, they're right here on Creativity Unleashed, so subscribe if you don't want to miss 
out on some of the new designs coming up soon. I hope you guys have a great one, and as always, any questions, leave them in the comments. See ya!